Hi everyone, hope you're doing well, being safe and being kind. Welcome to Tarot by the Pines and welcome to the 2021 Tarot Awards. I am your award-winning host for this, Jason. This special occasion would not be here without the lovely Tash over at Foxes and Brown Bears Tarot. Of course, I will put the link to her video in the description box below so you can check that out. In the meantime, join me as I give away awards in various categories such as Best Deck, Best Artwork, Best Theme, and so much more. Stay tuned. The first category, which is Best Deck for Beginners, I just put a little spin on this. So in the description box below, I'll have a little symbol where I had kind of switched up the category or put in my very own category. So the nominees for the Best Traditional Deck for Beginners are the Illustrious Tarot, the Original Tarot, Finally, the Smith Waite Tarot Deck Centennial Edition. And the award goes to Smith Waite Centennial Edition. This was a no brainer for me because this was my very first uh, traditional tarot deck. Uh, for some who have followed me, knows that I do not really enjoy the typical art style of the RWS, but I really respect it. The Cinean Tin Edition is a, like a coffee stained um, kind of aesthetic that I really enjoy. It makes it look authentic, it makes it look antique-ish, and it makes it look, you know, just a little less hurtful on the eyes. I've seen many RWS clones that are very bright, very bold, which I typically love, but for this kind of artwork, um, I'm not too crazy about that in-your-face coloring, but this one is very lovely. I love the palette. I am in love with these backs, and of course, I have major respects for this deck because it has Pamela Coleman Smith's uh, name in the front, and I am all about that. The next category is Best Non-Traditional Deck for Beginners. The nominees are The Beauty of Horror Tarot, Affirmators Tarot, The Lightseers Tarot, and finally, The Everyday Witch Tarot. And the award goes to the Light Sears Tarot. This one, when I say non-traditional, I mean a deck that follows in the traditional RWS system, but it is a deck that it's all on its own. It's very um, modern. It's very, uh, what's the word? It's a deck that can really relate to many people. Um, cause you know me, the traditional artwork, I just do not jive with it that much. And this one was a really hard category to come up with a great deck to win the award or win the category. Um, if you know me, Everyday Witch Tarot is my grand dame. But when I sat down with, you know, the idea of a best non-traditional tarot deck that would, uh, basically relate to the average person, I figured the Light Sears Tarot is for the win. It is very expressive. It's, you know, very um, emotional. It's colorful. It's not afraid to, you know, speak its mind. And the guidebook is a great little, um, well, not little, it's a great big little chunky book that has great information and Chris Ann is just a wonderful writer. Um, just a fabulous deck. The Light Seers is probably one of the most popular decks ever. The next category is Best Advanced Deck. The nominees are The Spacious Tarot, The Santa Muerte Tarot, the Animal Totem Tarot. And finally, the Mermaid Tarot. 
and the award goes to the Santa Muerte Tarot. Now, when I was choosing a deck for this category, I was thinking of a deck that still follows the traditional artwork of the RWS, but still looks and feels different than any other deck. Um, you know, with the Spacious Tarot, I would have chosen. However, it's it has many different layers onto it. It has pips and it has, you know, non-people, or it has no people in it, rather. But with the Santa Muerte, it has people, it has a theme, it follows the RWS system. However, it just feels different. It feels like it goes in a completely different direction. And the guidebook is a great little companion that helps with the, um, the artwork and the meanings of the illustrations. It is a really interesting deck. It's one that is great to pick up and work with during the spooky season and during the um, De los Muertos season. Um, I just love the aesthetic of this. And it's, you know, definitely in the advanced category for a tarot deck. It's not something I would recommend for a beginner to, you know, have this as their first tarot deck. But thankfully, the little guidebook does a wonderful job on um, explaining the meanings behind each illustration. The next category is Best Theme. And the nominees are the Golden Girls Tarot, the Halloween Tarot, Everyday Witch Tarot, and finally, the Beauty of Horror Tarot. And the winner is the Golden Girls Tarot. Now, when it comes to theme decks, they can be a hit or miss. Thankfully, the Golden Girls Tarot shoots it out of the park. I am really surprised by how well this deck was created and how much love it was given, specifically since it is a themed deck around a classic TV show. I'm not a big fan of the... Um, lackluster cardstock, but when it comes to the artwork and it it just really delivers on the theme of the Golden Girls. It's cute, it's sassy, it's fun, and it just really resembles everything that I love about the Golden Girls. I've seen multiple themed decks and they really kind of do a half-assed job but with this one it feels like there was a lot of love put in towards you know the illustrations the palette um unfortunately there is no guidebook um that's the only well the only two drawbacks is the cardstock and the um lacking of guidebook but in terms of the art it nails the theme on its head and it's just a really sassy and fun deck to work with the next category is Best Cardstock, and the nominees are The Spacious Tarot, The Lightseer's Tarot, The Smith Weight Tarot, and finally, The Affirmator's Tarot. And the winner is the Smith Weight Tarot. Now, all of these decks have wonderful cardstock. The Light Steers, this is the, um, the mass market edition. It is the second edition, I believe, the second printing. So it does have that wonderful cardstock. Um, it's much better than the uh, cardstock that was originally put on it. From the beginning, the Spacious Tarot is that lovely rose petal finish, thick cardstock. The Affirmator's Tarot, while the deck is an oracle size deck or oracle size cards, it has that linen finish that's really soft and really 
um, smooth to the touch. But when it comes to the Smith weight, and I've always had a thing for this deck when I first got it because this is a uh, cardstock that I've never had in my collection. It's still nothing that I've ever had in my collection. It is a just very smooth... Um, sorry, I didn't mean to... Very smooth. It's it's just really hard to explain, but the cards just really slide together and it's really, when you shuffle, you're really shuffling the cards and not just like maybe 10 to 15 cards per time. It's a cards that will really um, slide and shuffle really well. Thin, not too thin cardstock, really lovely. Um, so out of all of these, you know, there's no wrong answer, but for the Smithweight, it is a uh, cardstock that I haven't felt before. It is from, let's see, where is this from? I believe it's U.S. Games. Yes, U.S. Games. Um, just wonderful cardstock. All four of these decks have tremendous cardstock, so this category was a little challenging for me to choose a winner. Next category is Best guidebook and the nominees are the light sears tarot the spacious tarot everyday witch tarot and finally animal totem tarot and the winner is the animal totem tarot now, I had this deck in my collection a few years ago when I first started using Tarot. It is a deck that I couldn't completely connect with as a beginner, but I recently purchased this deck last year just because of the wonderful guidebook. I love all of these guidebooks, full color. This is packed with information as well as this, but with this one, it is really thick. It has well over 300 pages. What I really like about this deck, you get a full non-color image of the card. You have the message from the animal that's on the card, and then it dives deep into the meaning. However, what's really special about this is that um, Lisa Robinson has divided up the categories of the typical readings that you would get for business and career, family and relationships, health and well-being, as well as she gives you some journal prompts and then a page of where you can put in your notes. This is a fantastic guidebook. Um, it gives a little information about the elephant or the card, uh, the animal on the card, goes into the divina divinatory meaning of the Three of Swords, and then applies all of that into the three categories of the typical reading. Fantastic job. I just really <laughs> enjoy reading this guidebook, um, and I really enjoy the deck as well. It's it's definitely an advanced um, tarot deck, but with this guidebook, it's really going to be able to help you connect with all of the fabulousness that is in the Animal Totem Tarot. The next category is Best Indie and or Mass Market Oracle Deck. That was a mouthful, sorry about that. The nominees are the Animal Ken Oracle, the Ice Cream Oracle, the Wicked Egg Oracle, and finally, the Halloween Oracle. And the winner is the Animal Kin Oracle. Now, not only is this deck really bright, really colorful, really just interesting to work with, I really love this palette. I love how each card has a different theme of the colors, a wonderful variety of animals. It is just a really pleasant deck to even look at um, and work with. The cardstock is that uh, velvety rose petal uh, finish. Love it. Here are the backs. But what I really dig about this Oracle deck, 
that, you know, I feel like Oracle decks, many of them don't really have much substance, but when it comes to the Animal Kin Oracle, it has this wonderful um, guidebook that is a great companion to the cards. So, for instance, um, here you have like a half page of the card. It has the one sentence uh, quick description of what you can get from the card. And then it dives into the actual animal that's on the card. It really talks a lot about the, um, the animal and then how you, we as a human being can connect with it and just really really connect not only with the animal but with nature itself every card is a something that we all have come across or all, something that you know we have encountered in our lives and we really connect we can reconnect to the animals that are within this deck it's just really colorful really informative the next category is best artwork and the nominees are the Spacious Tarot, the Mermaid Tarot, the Beauty of Horror Tarot, and finally, the Lightseer's Tarot. And the winner is the Mermaid Tarot. I know this was a big surprise. Some of you would have said that I would chosen either the Light Seers or even the Spacious Tarot. But this deck, even if it's not a tarot deck, this artwork is just stunning. It's artwork that I would even just have on, you know, a wall. It's um, just really beautiful artwork. I can't put my finger on what type of artwork this is. I feel it could be watercolor. Um, it could be digitalized. It could be, you know, it's, yeah, it's just artwork that I can't put on my finger, like how this was created. It could have been hand-drawn. I don't know, but each card is just really a different world, um, and I love how this deck divides the four suits into like the different worlds like wands is like a vo uh, volcanic area in the water the swords is an icy arctic um world and then the pinnacles is like um land um it's just gorgeous and stunning artwork like this empress one of my favorite empresses it's just really gorgeous and it's just very heartfelt imagery that can be put on a wall and like I said if this you know even as a even if this wasn't a tarot deck it's just art that would just be great to have on your wall we're coming up on the last three categories the next category is best mass market deck and the nominees are the Santa Muerte Tarot the Affirmator's Tarot, the Lightseer's Tarot, finally, the Everyday Witch Tarot. And the winner is Everyday Witch Tarot. Now, when I was thinking about this category, I was encompassing, you know, everything that we're looking for in a tarot deck and more. Um, the guidebook is, of course, this is a Llewellyn deck, so it's going to be have a fantastic um, guidebook, full color. Um, love and I love how cute this, how love how um, cute this guidebook is. It's very, it's very on brand. It's very relatable. It's very, um, what's the another word to describe this? It's just very fun to read and entertaining. And that's something that I really appreciate about a tarot deck. The artwork, it is very Harry Pottery. It's very whimsical, fan fantasy. It's witchy. And what I also wanted to, you know, find a deck for this category is that it features animals, it features people, features nature, 
it is just an all-around tarot deck that I really love. It is my Grand Dame. It's a deck that I would use throughout the year. It's very relatable. It has that modern tone. It follows the traditional RWS um, artwork. And it's just a great deck. I can't get enough of this. Uh, it's just my Grand Dame. It's something that will always be in my heart and I will always have a special place for it. The next category is Best Indie Tarot Deck. The nominees are The Spacious Tarot, Tarot Disassembled, and The Five Cent Tarot. And the winner is The Spacious Tarot. Now, I don't buy many indie decks, obviously, as you can see. They are pretty expensive. But with this Spacious Tarot, I love how the backings look. This is a deck that really took me by the horns and just really dragged me on to get this deck. It is very uh, environmental. It features no people. And for the uh, court cards, it is animals. Um, but I love how this deck really brings you in to the image of the card. It does have um, a lot of pippish themes or pippish illustrations, but with the guidebook, it really works. I just love how it just brings you into the stunning art world or the stunning art that this um, tarot deck is showing. It is, it's just a great indie deck and I'm really happy that I purchased this. A great um, tarot deck that it, that if you want to perhaps, you know, go deep deeper than the traditional RWS, it is just stunning. I just, you know, it's just a deck that really is really hard to put into words because it is so out there but you know it just really pulls you in the different colors the different um environments that this has it's just a, a great indie deck that is all around fantastic the final category is best tarot and or oracle animal deck the nominees are the affirmators tarot the animal kin oracle the Tarot of Curious Creatures, and finally, the Animal Totem Tarot. And the winner is the Animal Totem Tarot. Now, for this specifically, when I'm thinking animal deck, regardless if it's tarot or oracle, um, it's because I'm looking for a deck that can not only talk about the animal that's within the cards, but also how it connects to us. And the Animal Totem Tarot has a, as said before, the guidebook is wonderful. It dives deep into, you know, the animal, but also it divides the three typical reasons of a, or typical scenarios of when someone goes for a reading, and it really dives deep into those three type of readings with the animal that's on the card. And that's what I really appreciate about this deck. The very close up runner up was the Animal Ken Oracle, but I decided against this, or I decided this deck would take, um, take the award because it just has a little bit more oomph when it comes to, um, what I really look for in a deck, regardless if it's a tarot or oracle deck. It talks about the animal, it talks about the different um, readings that people typically go for, you know, health, love, relationships, family, business, all of that. And the artwork is just really, you know, stunning. Um, a little advanced, but the guidebook is a wonderful companion to help you on your animal journey. That's all folks. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed my 
uh, tarot award show. Um, I hope it was fun for you watching as it was fun and a little bit challenging for me to do. Um, I apologize if it was a little chaotic there, um, but we got through it. So I appreciate you watching this far. Again, thank you so much for watching. And of course, I will put in the original video for Tash in the description box below, as well as all of the categories in this video. Again, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I will see you for Tarot by the Pines.